speaking, one of the things I've observed is that I'm naturally wired to empower individuals to unleash their potential. Mm -hmm. I can see a person, the person works with me, and through my leadership style, I'm able to help them evolve mm -hmm. and, you know, find it, find their purpose, unleash their potential, make meaningful contributions. So it's something that I've seen myself do over and over again. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of SME Chats. And today we are sitting with the founder and CEO of Lead for Good Africa. Hi Nonso. Hi Jamie, good to have you here. Right, good to have you too. How are you doing, doing today? Well, are thank you looking you. fabulous? As well as you. Know, you know, popping and all that. <laughs> All right, can you just give us a brief intro about um, Lead for Good Africa? Right. So Lead for Good Africa is a leadership development and skill empowerment social enterprise. There are two problems we're tackling. One is poverty. Um, two is human cap the human capital crisis that we have. Now, according to the World Bank, one of the quickest ways through which we can tackle the problem of poverty is by investing in people. And as an individual, I personally believe that Africa's greatest resource lies in her people and if each one of us were able to develop the personal leadership competencies required to increase our productivity then we can all work together to make meaningful contribution to our collective prosperity as a continent so what we're doing at lead for good africa is we're em empowering individuals with the leadership skills required to increase their productivity we're also empowering individuals in underserved communities including youths and women with the mindset the skill set the tool sets to step out of poverty and come into prosperity. So our work is phenomenal. The people we interact with. Really yes, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it just really inspires me seeing yeah. how people can evolve, you know, from thinking that, you know, poverty has had them bound to stepping out of poverty into a place of prosperity. And I'm really excited about the work that I do. I'm excited for you too. <laughs> because it really sounds very exciting. Yeah, yeah. So what inspired you to um, get into the leadership development space? Um, one of the things I noticed, I'm a trained lawyer, by the way. Oh, I have great. a master's in international commercial law from Robert Gordon University. I've done a lot of leadership courses um, from Lagos Business School. And in my interaction while working, one of the things I've observed is that I'm naturally wired to empower individuals to unleash their potential. Mm -hmm. I can see a person, the person works with me, and through my leadership style, I'm able to help them evolve mm -hmm. and you know find, it, find their purpose, unleash their potential make meaningful contributions. So it's something that I've seen myself do over and over again. I've worked with a lot of young people who have found themselves, you know, I mean, purpose discovery, and yeah. then they're able to unleash themselves and make meaningful contribution. And I thought that I really want to leave a mark yeah. on this world. I really want to, my dream as a, as a young child was to, you know, build schools, build hospitals, fix roads, because that's what I saw my dad doing. And I thought that it would be good to, you know, actually start living out this dream now that I'm still young, you know, help people who that can be helped and bridge the gap because we know that the government can solve all the problems Absolutely. we have. You know, so um, of course I've run different um, NGOs in the past, mm. but last year I said it was time for me to set up Lead for Good Africa. And since last year, we've reached over a thousand individuals. We've supported female-led businesses with interest-free loans, and we are on. Uh, or we are actually working on building our empowerment center, a skill empowerment center where people can actually come in, learn the hard skills, learn the soft skills to help them thrive, you know, and contribute to our prosperity. All right. So are you are you planning to build it just here in Lagos, Nigeria, or you're trying to spread across? Right. So we have a five year plan. Okay. Um start with Lagos. So we, we're going to Lagos, we're going to Joss, we're going to Cardona, we're going to Bayelsa and mm -hmm. we're going to Port Harcourt, areas underserved communities where people can't, you know, the skills that they need, you know, to earn a sustainable means of income. I personally believe that it's not enough to give the poor fish, True. teach them how, how to, to fish. Cut, yeah. and so that's the whole idea behind our empowerment center, our skill empowerment center. There are certain skills that we'll be teaching and we hope that they, they will then take those skills. We have um, proof of concept. Some women who have benefited from our program last year, she had no hope, nothing, you know, her, her 
demeanor was woe is me but we mm. got her to see that within you lies a potential that you can actually you know fulfill and now she has her own store she's earning better she's taking care of her children her children are going to school she can pay for their school fees and i think that that's you know looking at that dream that we have to set up five centers across nigeria starting with nigeria and then of course expanding to other countries in africa would really help reduce the 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 problem of poverty that we face, you know, at the moment in Africa. So um, I'm aware that in the leadership space, it can't all go so smoothly and stuff. So uh, I'm sure that there are some challenges that must have been faced. Maybe, I don't know if it's possible that one of the challenges could be maybe you're trying to empower someone and a person is not receiving empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, but yeah. So, what do you think are the pressing challenges in um, leadership development today? I think one of the um, first things I will say is when people think about leadership, right? They think about it's them, yeah, right, not us. It has nothing to do with us, and then they also think that leadership is just about okay, people who have a particular position um, and they are leading maybe a company, leading in government, mm -hmm. but they don't realize that leadership first, the first thing about the first, um, when it comes to leadership, the first concept is self-leadership. True. And when we look at the decline in productivity, because there's a decline in productivity, it's really about personal leadership, mm. right? How are you able to be effective as an individual so that you're managing your time, you're prioritizing well, you're seeing beyond your immediate environment, your optimistic about how you see, how you even see yourself and how yeah. you even see the environment around you. So be, that that's what we're getting people to see, truly see that there's something within them that it can contribute, right? And by on seeing what is within them, prioritizing how to develop themselves, self-governance as well, applying self-governance, the, the things I talk about, visioning, self-governance, then yeah. they are able to develop the personal leadership competencies that make them productive. So you're thinking actively about how can I contribute to our collective development, knowing that government cannot do the work alone. I'm sure you yeah, heard me say yeah. that. I'm, I'm yeah, saying that absolutely. a lot. You know, so we all have a part to play. But me playing my part depends on my ability to govern myself. Mm. True. That makes a lot of sense. And that's what we're getting people to see, changing the stereotype that leadership is not just about, oh, them in Asorok, them in Alausa, mm -hmm. you know, but in Lagos, but actually me, myself, how can I develop myself in a way that I'm leading myself well, I'm contributing well, and then I'm productive, you know, um, and that way we can we can then reduce the death in human capital development, because that's one of, one of the things that the World Bank is act actively pushing, developing individuals so that we can all reduce, you know, um, the, the amount of poverty that we see on, on our streets and in our fantastic, country. Fantastic, fantastic. So what role does um, social, um, how do you call it now, social enterprise, what role does social enterprise play in um, making a very positive impact amongst the citizens and the, even in the industry where it serves? So what role does social enterprise play in making that positive impact? Right. So one of the primary reasons why a social enterprise exists, one, is to solve social problems. Yeah. Right. And solve social problems and then make profit while so. So it's called profit and purpose. Oh. So a lot of individuals who work in social enterprises, they, there's a purpose that they have and they're able to then channel their purpose to, so, you know, um, to making a bigger impact. And so that's one of the benefits of having a social enterprise. For so people who work in a social enterprise, you can channel your purpose to solve a social problem. Mm -hmm. And social enterprises also bridge the gap Right, mm. we bridge the gap in terms of the things that the government can do, like training, reaching the underserved, providing healthcare um, services for people who don't have access to healthcare. Yeah. You know, reducing poverty, tackling poverty, helping with education, getting access, more access to education, and then just general empowerment. Mm. Um, so that's that's one of the benefits of having a social enterprise. And of course, for you to have a holistic society, you need you know those in government, you yeah. need those in the private sector, you also need those who are working. In the NGO and the social space so that we are actively thinking about how we can invest in people. Private sector organizations are concerned about profit, True. right? Government is concerned. Government ideally should implement <laughs> policies to enable us thrive. And then the social yeah. sector, we're thinking about how can we invest in people because it's people who build a country. Mm. It's people who contribute, you know, to the development of a country. And if you're not investing in people, that means you're not investing in the development of your country, right? right? So that's one of the benefits that we have um, of having a social 
social enterprise, and I'm really excited about the work that we do. I'm sure you can tell that I'm I'm so um, I'm it, passionate the, the, about the excitement it. is very <laughs> contagious because I'm I'm excited <laughs> on your behalf. Okay, all right. So how do you tailor your programs, you know, to meet the needs of your target audience? Right. So for our individuals, we have we have three core programs. So we have a take the lead training program for individuals. Okay. Right. Then we have something called the lead for good impact project, okay. which we implement in underserved communities. Okay. Now for our take the lead um, training program for individuals, we have young people spread across Africa. So we have people from Zambia who join our trainings, um, Liberia, from Kenya, from Ghana, even Nigeria here. And one of the things that we do is that we usually send out at the beginning of the year, there's a form that you fill and you let us know what aspect of leadership development are you actively looking to develop. Yeah. Now, based on that, on those responses, we curate our programs to address the topics that, you know, most of the topics that they let us know. Then um, our program in on the South communities, at the moment now we're in Ojo, we did a needs analysis to just see what areas do they want to be trained in. Mm. One of the areas that they spoke about in running businesses in financial literacy, budgeting. Yeah, yeah. And so the last program that we had, you know, addressed those areas. So before we implement any leadership training session, mm -hmm. we usually carry out a needs assessment. For our skill empowerment, one of the things that we've observed, you know, while working in this community is that a lot of them want to, you know, elevate their quality of life, but they don't have the necessary skill. So simple skills like entrepreneurial skill, problem yeah. solving, you know, that the educational system, especially in Nigeria, it's not so, you know, curated Fantastic. in a way that it helps you solve, <laughs> prob <laughs> solve problems, <laughs> critical thinking. And so those are some of the things that we help, critical thinking, communication, um, financial budgeting, especially for those in underserved communities. And then generally how to elevate your mindset, right? And I, I talk a lot about mindset because a yeah. lot, who we are on the outside is it's as a result from, yeah. of who we are on the inside. So True. we get them to see that, you know, um, they need to do that work on the inside of them so that they can then on the outside evolve and step step into the things that they need to step into in terms of you know prosperity as I like to call it. <sighs> Fine, fantastic. So I hear you say you've um been part of a lot of um, leadership development programs. So can you share maybe just one or a few of um, some of the leadership development program that your organization has been a part of and they have been successful? Right. I'll give a simple scenario. There was a young man who um, very, very talented with fashion designing, with drawing, very creative, ability you know, to make clothing, but because of the mindset, right, mm. he wasn't able to really make um, good work out of what he was doing. And then he attended one of our programs where we spoke about visioning, we spoke about goal setting, we spoke about personal leadership, time management, prioritizing, we spoke about increasing your productivity, critical thinking. And I'll tell you that now he serves clients outside of Nigeria. He wow. ships from here you know, in Nigeria outside. And that, that for me, that's a testament that what we're doing actually works, works yeah. you know, because you really, you truly get to see that you have the capacity, you know, to make meaningful contribution. And then when you apply yourself, I say it a lot, you apply yourself in terms of you've got to do the work because we teach you the things that you, you know, you might not learn within the but four walls of school. Then the exactly. <laughs> we can't help you do the work, but yeah. you've got to do the work. And when you do yeah. the work, you actually are better for it. And there's actually proof. You, I can see the proof. Even in the young there's a woman who, I mean, she's so despondent, but we, we sat down with her, shared, mm -hmm. okay, this is what you can do. This is how to start your business. And then we even gave her, you know, money to say, start your business. When you start making money, you pay us back. And she started paying us back. Yesterday, I got, you know, we got um, a, an alert that she started paying us back in bits. And I so think, you, you gave her capital to yeah, start yeah, the business. Yes, yes. Because I was going to ask you, how do you, um, apart from training these people, mm -hmm. do you empower them with any resources that helps yes. them start? That off. Yes, exactly. That's why I said we do skill set, my mindset, skill set, and tool set. Tool set being the resources that you can use to start off. So, for instance, this woman, we gave her capital, right, to use to start up, and that's why we want to set up a skill empowerment center so that. In the skill empowerment center, apart from learning, you know, the mindset, you then are also equipped with tools. So we're partnering with different organizations who can help us with tools that these people can actually start off with, right? So yeah. they have a soft landing, yeah. use what they've learned, and then elevate their quality Amazing. of life. So if you have a... Okay, I think the question should be now, do you just train these people for um, maybe skills that are less capital intensive? 
Right. So at the fo- at the moment, we based on the needs assessment that we collect, right? When we do the assessment, we look at their needs. We look at the area of interest that they specify because yeah. they usually specify their yeah. area of interest. We then group it in accordance with you know. If you are in fashion designing, if you are in catering, based on your need, we, we curate, you know, their own curriculum. But for our empowerment center, there are certain skills that we've highlighted that we're going to teach in the empowerment okay. center. So including sustainable fashion designing, okay. we're thinking about food product, food packaging, you okay. know, um, agriculture as well, because agriculture is something that we really need. Uh, we're looking at arts and crafts, like hand, what you can make with your hands. So things that are easy to start off with and oh. things that maybe require not more much capital you okay. know those are some of the things we're looking to teach in our yeah because i was i was going to ask if you've ever encountered anyone with a skill that they want to maybe learn or already have and it's very capital intensive so how have you been able to like manage or maneuver that challenge well so far we have so we we cut our clothes according to our side <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as you should you know, so but for instance there was a lady that we recently met um she makes um, what's it called? Uh, accessories, hair accessories. Okay. So you, you, your your little hats. Um, um, yes, your little hats. She actually does make that. Like and fascinators. She, but thank you. That's yeah. what I was talking about. Fascinators. <laughs> she makes fascinators. Yeah. And when we asked, you know, she makes fantastic fascinators. Oh, nice. She stays somewhere in Okoko. Oh, and really? when we asked her what she requires, I think she said she needs about two hundred or something thousand naira. Mm. And I said. We don't have that yet because considering the amount of people we're trying to reach, what reach, we do, yeah. we look at what you, what you, and then we're trying to just at least empower you with maybe take 50K here, take, you know, um, and, and we told her that at the moment we can't afford this yet, but look at your budget. What can you absolutely start with? What do you absolutely need? Okay. So we're still reviewing that. We had a meeting with her this week, still reviewing to just see what we can afford and then support her, you know, on her own journey. Okay. So do you have a limited number of people that you can take on at a time? Well, everything depends on money, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So at the moment, we're really pushing for partnerships. Our goal is to reach 5,000 people um, next year and by 2020... Per month or per, for the, the, whole the, whole, the whole year? Okay. By okay. 20, uh, 2025, we want to have, have covered 50,000 people through our training programs and then through also empowering them with the necessary tool sets to yeah. help them, you know, um, come up and do you understand? So um, we're really pushing for partners, mm. people who can support us. The more support we have, the more we can extend, you know, to Absolutely. reach more people. All right. So how do you, I mean, apart from measuring impact by maybe you teach somebody something and then they put it into good use and they're making money from it, absolutely good. But how else do you measure impact in your organization? Right. How many people attend our trainings? How many people improve their quality of life? by the trainings and how many people are affected by the improved quality of life. So I'll give you an instance. Now, this lady who couldn't pay her her children's school fees, who is now, you know, she now earns and she's now able to pay her her children's school fees. We've impacted the life and they are four kids, right? We've we've touched their lives because now they're all back in school. And you know, poverty is one of the reasons why people can't, you know, um, afford education, right? So we see that's, that will count that as an impact. So both direct impact impact, indirect Indirect, impact, you know, people that do something with the training and then there's a visible, tangible result. So that's, those are some of the ways that we measure, you know, the impact. Great, great. So apart from partnering with other organizations that you believe can help you achieve your goal Mm -hmm. as an organization itself, do you also partner with communities, maybe like CSR projects? Um, I would say yes. So the, the, uh, contact person in Ojo, um, Okoko, she has her own NGO, oh, great. right? And we have more visibility. We have more partners. And so we partnered with her, right? Okay. She has access to um, the communities. And so okay. we. she was the one that gave us inroad into the community that we're currently working in. Okay. And for me, Goal 17 speaks about partnerships. I'm big on partnerships and collaboration because yeah. I really believe that collaboration is one of the quickest ways that we Actually, can really true. advance our impact. No, no point working in silos. We've worked in silos for a long time. Mm-hmm. For a long time you know. So I believe that um, partnership is the, is the key. And so we've partnered with her. We're also looking at partnering with an organization in JOS okay. you know, to extend our impact as well because the North really 
need support. Yes. A lot of social impact work is focused on the south. You yeah. need to do a lot of work in the north. You know, so we're you know expanding our reach to um, to work with organizations in the north that can help us ex extend our impact and you know help more people in those areas. Mm, fantastic. So how long have you been? around how long has lead for, Af lead for, <laughs> for good, good africa, africa been around <laughs> honestly i started lead for good africa last year in wow. august yeah when i tell people they're like how have you done all of this i mean i'm surprised i was thinking you're going to say like five mm. years i actually started lead for good africa in august last year um, mm. I've worked in the development sector for quite a bit. I ran F oh. Freedom Foundation. Oh. I was in Freedom Foundation. Um, and I've worked in different organizations. So one of the things that do those experiences have done for me is that it solidified my ability to lead this organization to where we are going. And I, I must say, not to toot my horn, but I'm visionary, yeah. right? And so I see the vision of the future that I want for the organization. And I'm actively driving and pushing that vision so that we can really, you know, um, reach more people. And like I said, earlier i really want to help people i'm in need to help people it's yeah. it, it gives me joy when i see people um elevate their quality of life it gives me so much joy like i, I can see where you were and where, where you, you are, are now it's mm. it's priceless i know i know okay so um in terms of investors how do you get your investors i mean it's easy for someone to just say okay i woke up to someone that i believe can be of help to my organization and i just see one or two things and then person just gets on board but we all know that it's not exactly so easy especially when it comes to business it's always a give and take situation you are either giving me something that's also beneficial to me and i'm trying to partner with you to also make your own goal come through so how do you get your investors what do you should I say what charge do you give to them that makes them actually want to invest in your company? Right. So, so far, we've worked with organizations that are really big on CSR, uh, right? See. So I've worked with Zenith Bank, partnered with Zenith Bank, with Nestle, also partnered with Microsoft. You Interesting. Know, um, and they're really big on CSR. And uh, so far, my career experience or my journey through my career has helped me cultivate relationships. I'm really big on relationships. Yeah. You know, that's, it, it has helped me cultivate relationships. Um, and I'm also really conscious about being a person of integrity so that as I invest in my relationships, I can call in favors by True. God's help. Help, yeah. you know um and when when we need support based on the fact that these organizations are really interested in helping the poor we can then work together so that has you know made the work easier in terms of getting investors it's not easy i must say you know getting people to really invest in other people but we're making good strides in terms of the connections that we have and then extending to reach more people to support us all right so you're still watching sme chat and today we're still sitting with the fantastic founder and ceo of lead for good africa we'll go on a break and when we're back we'll continue our very interesting conversation in today's dynamic global economy small and medium enterprises stand as hansung hero playing a pivotal role in driving economic growth fostering innovation and creating employment opportunities for millions now according to the world bank 600 million jobs will be needed by 2030 to absorb the growing workforce. And believe me when I tell you that the SMEs will be the major employer. My name is Oluwa Danilo Laibitui and I'm on a mission to uncover and reveal the stories of incredible entrepreneurs who are changing the game in the business world. I'll be sitting down with passionate and innovative business leaders as they share their journeys, challenges, futuristic plans and successes. SME Chats, spotlighting, inspiring entrepreneurs, one episode at a time. All right, welcome back. You're still watching SME Chats. And once again, we're sitting with a very beautiful founder and CEO of Lead for Good Africa. All right. <laughs> so how do you ensure um, inclusivity and diversity in your organization with what you do? Right. Um, I'm big on, <laughs> on women. Right. I also lead a women's movement. Oh, apart from me from Africa. Yeah, I'm a woman of many parts. And so at the moment, I work maybe 80% of my team members are women. Mm, right. Um, and then, of course, I'm also, I'm also conscious about the fact that um, we need to be inclusive in terms of people with disability when we do our work, especially um, in the communities that we work with. So the last, I remember that the last um, 
event, the last initiative that we had in Ojo, we had people who were there, and at least the, the environment was conducive for them. Yeah. You know, um, so it's something that I'm, I'm consciously working towards, I'm working on, incorporating in the work that we do. You know, empowering more young women, yeah. um, working with people who have some form of disability, disability, and then just you know being conscious that we need to create a much more equitable society. You know, for these groups of people. All right. So, have you ever had any successes with training anyone with a disability that actually started their business and they're doing very well in it now? Um, f on this particular project, no, not yet. You know, um, I'll be honest. I haven't. We haven't had to. You know. Um, Train one. I remember that the the last collective training that we had, they were there. Yeah. One of the ladies was she was there, but in terms of the moving to the parts of being supported with low um, the interest free loan, we haven't given that particular business yet. And some as we as we get more funders, then we can extend and reach more more okay. people. Okay. So about the interest free loan, how was your repayment structure? So depending on. Um, their capacity and we give we give them a time frame so we look at your business you do there's a lot of our programs team need she looks at your business she does the due diligence check what you what are your plans yeah. you know um, for the business how are you going to make the money back how are you going to pay back in what you know what type what time frame are you going to be able to pay it back and so based on each individual each case she then a lot allocates a time frame for repayment Okay, what's the biggest challenge you've ever faced when since you started this business? The um, biggest challenge you've ever faced and how you actually conquered them? The biggest challenge that I've ever faced? Well, maybe I will say getting the buy-in of stakeholders yeah. um, to really see the vision that I see and um, getting them on board, really. Mm. I would say that, the law, for instance, the last partnership that I, I we had for, with Microsoft where I was talking about bringing young girls from o Okoko yeah. to, to the Microsoft facility to give them a picture of what they can be, right? Because there's nothing like having a dream as a young person, you know, seeing the possibility of what, what can be, because that alters your mindset. Mm. So you're not just limited to what, what you grow up around and yeah. thinking that you don't have the capacity to step out of poverty, right, into prosperity. And it was really good to see the experience of everyone on that particular project, getting them to, you know, open up the space, allow the girls come in. And the girls were, in fact, they keep, they've gone on and on about that experience. And it has marked them for life. Yeah. Because now they have no option to realize, to think that I can I can make a difference. One of them was talking about how she's going to create a tech platform, mm. you know, for tailors. She's what? She's not even up to 15 or 16. Interesting. Right? So um, I believe that as we, as I journey, yes, I will encounter people who don't really see the vision that I see, but, you know, getting them to buy into the vision. And that's where leadership comes into play, really. Getting your stakeholders to buy into what you see and to support you, I think is a big deal. And I it think I, de I deserve, deal. like, a round of applause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So how do you, what's your, what's your partnership style? Because I'm trying to, I mean, I understand that the, the, the organizations that you have partnered with are also very big on CSR, mm -hmm. but I don't think that that's enough for them to want to partner with you particularly, because I also believe that there are quite a number of other people, other women especially, that do this same thing. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is your leadership, your rather partnership style? How do how have you been able to get these organizations on board to actually work with you? Well, when you see, think about investing in people. If the World Bank is investing in people, then why shouldn't we invest in people? If MasterCard Foundation is investing in people, why shouldn't we invest in people? Mm. When you realize the resource that people are. Yeah. Because when you think about the challenges we have in Nigeria, don't you think it's a people problem? I think it's a people problem, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> think about think about the challenges we have when it comes to values, yeah. our work ethics. Yeah. Right? It's, it's a people problem. You know, so when we actively realize that when we invest in people, we're investing in our collective development then we don't have another option than to do the work of investment mm, and to partner mm. with organizations that are actively invested in mm. people. There are a lot of organizations out there, um, Act Foundation, there are grantor organizations as well. In fact, Leap Africa, you know, is one of them. And Leap Africa has been working actively in the I leadership think, development yeah, you yeah. Know, space for the last 20 years. And leadership is still a challenge. And in the next two, three years, it will still be a, you know, I think it will be a very continuous yes, challenge. A continuous, <laughs> cha continuous <laughs> challenge. So, I mean, it's, when you think about the fact that when you invest, you're investing 
interested in people. And we also create platforms for organizations who have wares to sell to these people. Oh, great. So that they can, you know, get some return um, on investment. And then in our empowerment center as well, that's some, one of the things that we, we're looking at, at what's produced in the empowerment center is sold, mm. right? And that's an opportunity to, to make some money for the for-profit organizations that are investing in the work that we're doing. Interesting. What role does um, tech play in oh. leadership? <laughs> in leadership, um, or rather, in leadership development, yes. I yes. would say tech, I, I think one of the greatest innovations of our time is technology. Absolutely. I have team members, in, I, have, I have a team member in the UK. I have, my, I have a team member oh. in Joss. Right, oh, I have I've worked with all sorts of people who I had like I just on my laptop. Right, I use Slack. We, we use Slack yeah, to coordinate yeah, our yeah. activities. So technology has been a fantastic, you know, innovation that has helped with solving the problems that we have. You know, um, and every, everyone uses a measure of tech. Every on your True. phone, we all use you know a measure of tech. It makes and life easy. It makes life easy. <laughs> you know, in <laughs> fact, one of the things that we're teaching the ladies that you know the the people were empowered is how to use your phone to put your business online to reach a larger you know, Audience, customer base. Yeah, Do you understand? Instead yeah. of, yes, we know that you're in an underserved community, but if you have a phone, it's not just for Facebook, it's not just for WhatsApp. You can use it to reach you know um, a larger audience. And that's an element, for instance, of the benefit of um, um, of technology for us as, a, as an organization. So it makes work easy for me. Um, it makes me also reach more people. Yeah. I've been here. I can't tell you the organizations that I've you know been in contact with by virtue of technology mm. right i i was recently um, um I, I recently got a fellowship oh. um, from vital voices a global mm. fellowship one of 50 women globally so i'm here i'm you know in meetings and just in sessions with women all across the world in afghanistan in israel and that's what that's technology right and i think that's really brilliant wow you're doing big things like a small man doing very big things. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So what sets your social enterprise apart from other social enterprises? Like I said earlier, I'm sure that there are so many other women out there doing very similar things, right? But what sets your own social enterprise apart from every other one? I think for me, it's really the fact that we're tackling mindsets. Mm. So yes, we teach you skills, we give you resources, but we also address what's going on in your mind. In your mind. Yeah, because that's not something people do a lot of times. They just gather people around, teach them this, teach them that, and hope that they've probably been impacted or something, but nobody really goes it's into your mind. what's yeah. in the mind. Because your mind your mind is what empowers you to actually yeah. live that life of prosperity and contribution. I, I have mentorship programs for young people, and mm. I recently concluded one with a company in New York. Oh, yeah. And one of the ladies that was assigned to me, she's in Malaysia. She's young. Mm. And through the mentorship program, yesterday she was saying that one of the benefits for her from the program, the leadership mentorship program, is that I was really able to get into her mind to mm. see herself. And she's more confident. She's now able to act, to step out and implement the project. She's working with um, um, children, refugee children in Malaysia. Mm. And for me, that's what sets me apart. Yeah. I, can, I can see you. And I have direct contact with the, the beneficiaries that we work with. We gather together. We really see you, see the challenge that you have, and then get you to really see within yourself because that work has to be done within yourself before yeah. it can be done without. Yeah. The mistake is that we sometimes make is that we want to do the work without, without focusing on the work within. Hmm. And mm. so that's what I believe sets me apart. And yeah. that's why, for instance, the success story that I shared of the young boy who is now supplying products to, you know, countries abroad is that he began to see himself he began to see the what he carried. He began to he began to understand his identity, and that's one of the challenges that young people go through, mm. especially young people of African descent. You know, getting to really understand your identity and living from that place of identity, mm. so that you can make your own contribution, your own unique contribution to the world. So, I mean, I can go on. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so in your line of um, business, because you are in the social enterprise space, so in your line of business, have there been any um, ethical issues that you have faced? Or are there even any ethical issues at all? And if there are, and you've even faced any, how have you been able to, like, deal with all of these challenges? Um, I would say I haven't faced any, but I'll give you an, a quick example. One of the projects that we um, implemented, we went into the community and... The lady 
the lady was like, I hope you are, no, you are not one of those NGOs or social enterprises that just comes, take our pictures, and then we never hear from you anymore. Uh, and I said, no. is that what you're used to? And she said, yes. I said, no, we're not like that. Mm. So one of the things that have been top priority for me is to build an, an organization with integrity. And so if perchance I'm faced with a situation where my integrity or the integrity of my organization would be in compromise, I'll walk away. Hmm. Mm. I'll walk away. So Fantastic. even when we're budgeting, we're putting in our budget, I'm saying, can we do it in such a way that we, it portrays that the integrity that we want to, we're building as an organization? Because we're, talk, we're talking about leadership and having the right value system. If we have the right value system, you know, um, we can be examples to people who are coming mm. behind and people who even interact with us so that, yeah. so that we all, you know, um, that we are able to solve the problem of corruption that's preventing our collective development as a, as a continent. All right. So, Nonso, for someone who is looking to start their own social enterprise, what do you think are the crucial things that they need to look out for? Right. Um, I always tell people to start with the end in mind. Start with why, right? Have a compelling vision. A compelling vision. What do you want to do? What is the impact of what you want to do? Who yeah. are the people you need to work with? Right. Yeah. Who are your collaborators? Um, and then as you develop that, you also develop a strategy and then implementable steps. Think how you're going to execute because execution is important. You can Very have important. the brightest ideas, but if you cannot execute, I mean... <laughs> yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> You know, so... Um, and then, of course, I talk about people. Um, if, who are you building with? Who are you going to build with? Even if you're not going to work with anybody in the first year when you, when you start initially, but who are the people advising you? Who are the people you surround yourself? with what people that will bring clarity because i find that when you have a vision yeah um in the process of talking to people about it it gets clearer yeah you know um it gets True. clearer and then you're able to see the part areas of the vision that you haven't you can't see ordinarily by your own self you know and then you work out how how do you want to incorporate the organization do you mm. want to set up an incorporated trustee or do you want to set, set it up as a limited by guarantee you mm. know and then pace yourself pace yourself i tell people to pace themselves you start building of course receive Resilience is important. <laughs> You've got to be <laughs> resilient. <laughs> You've got to be resilient. Well, business without buzzbuzz. In Nigeria. Bus is mm. a standard. Is it constant? In Niger- you've got to be tough. <laughs> you know, you've got to be tough to be able to run a business, yeah. successful business. Even if you think about the Tony Lumelus of the world, I'm sure yeah. when they tell you the, the, story, the stories, yeah. you know, so sometimes I think that one of the challenges we have in this age of social media is we think that things are going to happen so quickly and now, like, I want this now. I started, hmm. you know, so um, it's important that people, you pace yourself, right? And I say, be, be focus on your path, right? right? There's a lot of distraction, you know, and there's a temptation to want to go everywhere. That's why it's important to have a compelling yeah. vision, a clear vision, so that you're not distracted by things that are good, but are not good for you. You, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And then I say that, don't compare yourself with other people. Yes, be inspired by other people. Let them trigger you on your journey to improve yourself, but do not allow, you know, yourself to be in competition such that it ties you down or wears you from, you know, um, making the progress that you ought to make. And I think that with that, a compelling vision, right strategy, the people, the resources that you have, resilience, you know, focus. Focus mm. is so important very now. Important. It's very important now. It's very world. easy to be distracted in the world of today. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and I'm sure that, you know, and you do it, you do it based on your own unique wiring, right? And yeah. then I'm sure you can set up your own social enterprise. Thank you so much, Nonso. It's been a very fantastic conversation. I've learned so much. I have learned so much that I did not think mm. I did not know. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. I mean, so yeah, yeah, I've actually learned so much. Mm. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you for staying with us. We've come to the end of a very fantastic episode of SME Chat. And today we start with a very delectable lady. Mrs. Nonso Clark, the CEO and founder of Lead for Good Africa. Thank you for staying with us. Till next time. Bye bye. My name is Mrs. Chiwen Biora. I sell fruit and corn. I'm one of the beneficiaries of uh, Lead for Africa financial support. It's through the money they give to me that I used to start this business, as you can see. And through the, the, the money, God has been helping me, my family, we are feeding well in my family.
so i'm so thankful to the lead for africa i say god bless you all in jesus name